Hi everybody, thanks a lot for taking the time to join us back on my channel. My name is Ray Conti. If you've never been here before, I'm a national Corvette sales representative, been specializing and focusing on Corvette for over 20 years. Now this channel, I talk about the car, kind of talk about the marketplace, and I love talking with you folks. We do this whole thing in a little bit of a different manner. We have fun, I love keeping you properly informed, and along the way, we like to keep you a little bit uh, entertained if we can. So <laughs> thanks for taking a moment out of your day, your evening, and joining us here on the channel. Uh, what I want to do today is do just a quick follow-up to the ZR1 pace car crash. Uh, one thing I forgot, you know, that was such a hot topic when we did that video. One thing I forgot to talk about that could have been a contributing factor to the to the crash, well, you guys mentioned in the comments. I want to discuss that and show you a couple of things again real quick. Also today, this beautiful red Stingray Coupe. Steve is en route as we're filming, driving up from Florida to pick that up today. But uh, what we're going to do today real quick is show you this beautiful fresh arrival of a Carbon 65 Grand Sport convertible. Yeah, folks, real quick, I want to do a follow-up in regards to the ZR1 pace car crash that happened at the Detroit Grand Prix. That's all anybody's been talking about this past weekend. I know Mark feels real bad. And here's the thing, Mark's an experienced driver, not only just experienced in Corvette performance cars, he's driven that track at the Detroit Grand Prix many times as the pace car driver in many different Corvettes. Now, I had forgotten about this in the first video, but you guys did mention it in the comments. And by the way, if you missed that first video and our elaboration on what happened with the crash, uh, you can see that link one up here is going to be one of those cards that come across and click it you can go directly to that video or you can look at a link below right here on the YouTube channel but here's the thing that I missed and I appreciate you guys bringing it up yeah so we know that Mark's experienced but we don't even know how many laps Mark had before we saw the highlights of the ESPN clip uh, also what were the weather conditions how cool was it okay you've got the water right there you've got a lot of cool air Were the tires cool was the track cool and here's the one thing also that I noticed because I've been looking at the video over and over again and let's show you guys a little bit in slow motion here, okay? So obviously, coming up over that crest is definitely a concern depending on the speed. Number one, like the ESPN commentator said, I don't think that he expected that car in front of him to be there. If you look at it in real time, let's show you in real time here, okay? You look at it in real time, he looks like he's closing in on that car pretty quick. So let's slow it down a little bit again, and as he comes up over that little crest, and it's bigger than you can really see here in the video, so I'm sure it was significant that could adjust, obviously it did, the handling of the car. As he comes up over it, yeah, we still anticipate the traction was off, okay? And you just see those wheels spinning, but if the wheels are cool, and as you notice, there's a black line there where most of the cars have been going. See how he's a little bit to the left? He's just to the left of that, so that could have been even a little bit cooler and non-sticky concrete that he was on that contributed to him losing control of the car. Hey, we talked about it in the first video, and let's face it, these cars are easy to drive, so it's easy for us to drive beyond our abilities. And the ZR1, oh my gosh, and the ZTK with the Cup 2 tires, that is a lot of car that none of us, <laughs> I don't think there's anybody in the audience that can handle that car. There's a lot of car there. I mean, really handle it to, to its nth degree? Come on, guys, be honest with yourself. <laughs> so yeah, the weather certainly could have been a factor, and one guy even made a comment below thinking that I was making the statement and I was just reading the statement from General Motors about the weather, but the weather has to be in a factor. Yeah, it was a nice sunny day, dry day right there where you're seeing that clip, but if it's cool, those Cup 2 tires, man, they need to be heated up. They need to be hot so they stick. You know, like I said, how many laps did he have? Look where he came in. So anyways, we've all talked about it enough. I just wanted to bring that up, a quick follow-up. Also, to just thank everybody for all the great views and the great comments. I really appreciate your participation right here on this channel. And one more thing just to mention on that pace car crash, I mean, Mark kind of mentioned it himself. He was so thankful to the Corvette engineers for providing such a safe vehicle. I mean, he slammed into the wall. Airbags, boom, come flying out. He got out of that car and walked away. And I want to thank Pete in Michigan for grabbing this picture for us somewhere off to the side, trying to be hidden, trying to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Here's the ZR1 pace car that just slammed to the wall. Notice that it's pulled in. It's not pointing outward. Yeah, they're trying to hide that the best they can and just uh, try and get some assessment of what has to be done to the cars. Thanks again, Pete, for watching the channel and sending us that picture. Do appreciate it, man. All right, as I get nestled in here, these competition seats. Oh, 
man, these things feel so good. They really do. And I love, love this package, as I mentioned at the beginning of the vlog. The Carbon 65 package. That's the meat and potatoes of today's vlog. Welcome to the channel. Uh, we acquired this car from another dealership that said, I don't don't know how to sell it. We don't have a representation of Corvette in the marketplace. <laughs> I mean, we're, get, we're getting that a lot right now. We're getting a lot of dealers that hey, I've got this car, uh, and as I do some research on them, uh, there's no pictures of the car online, and if there are pictures, they're taken into the sun, they're dark, the cars are dirty. Uh, how would you expect to sell that car? Are you kidding me? Even this car came in and like, ah, ah, hey, there's no carbon fiber ground effects. Where are those at? And many, you guys would not you wouldn't even believe how many dealers, and I even had one general manager in Texas call me, a Z06 that we bought for a local client. Uh, he says, hey man, that car's been sitting in front of my showroom for eight months. I didn't know it was supposed to get any ground effects. I said, well, go go back into parts. There's a little box with an orange sticker on it. It'll have the last part of the VIN number. And just don't even open that box. Go ahead and just send it up to us if you'd be so kind. <laughs> it is just crazy. So I really know and I can relate to the frustration you go through, even though you give allegiance to your local dealer and let's face it, don't feel bad buying out of your marketplace. If you're buying a specialty car, this is a specialty car that we're sitting in. You guys know you need to deal with a specialist. That's myself. I'm going to give you the right information. Yeah, I want to do business, but I'm going to give you the right information so you're basing your decisions on fact and you just you just feel a little bit better about the money that you're spending, okay? So, okay, enough of that. Let's show you this beautiful Carbon 65 Corvette convertible. This is a Grand Sport. Now, in case you didn't know, they only made 650 Carbon 65 Corvettes for the entire world. That's between Grand Sport and Z06, Coupe and Convertible. Now, out of those 650 Carbon 65 editions, only 35 were made as Grand Sport convertibles, and we're sitting in one right now. Out of those 35 convertibles, only five were made with the Z07 performance package, and that's what we have to show you today on the vlog. I'll tell you what, guys, when it comes to special edition Corvettes of recent years, this particular one, the Carbon 65 package, it's got to be one of my favorites. Welcome to our vlog. Now this is actually the first Carbon 65 convertible we've had at the dealership and many people ask and it's hard to photograph. Even today I've got a little bit of a hazy sun trying to get some sunlight on it for you guys. What color is the top? It is a navy blue and it matches this beautiful which has a little bit of a blue undertone in the paint. The ceramic matrix gray is just gorgeous and of course you, you put that together with the blue calipers blue stitching inside. This is just a great package. A little bit of a blue accent of the Carbon 65 logo on the front fender. This package is gorgeous. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video out of the recent Corvette Special Edition cars, this Carbon 65 for the 65th anniversary of Corvette is really, truly one of my favorites, and I think GM did a great job on it. It features carbon fiber, exposed carbon fiber, ground effects, this molded one-piece rear spoiler. Oh, man, is that hot. Wow. Exposed carbon fiber hood stinger. Classy, pure class right there. And of course, part of the ground effects package is your front splitter extension, which is also in the exposed carbon fiber. Look at the carbon fiber on the inside. High gloss through the dash, top of your steering wheel, bottom of the steering wheel. <laughs> wow, is that sweet. The competition seats are part of the package and they even have high gloss carbon fiber. And that blue stitching is perfect. Oh, and you can't forget the blue calipers. Oh my gosh, the blue calipers are fantastic. They were so synonymous with top level Corvettes, ZR1 only. To have it on this particular car for 2018 was really, really sweet. Oh, and how about the carbon center caps? Yeah. Carbon ceramic brakes are on this car simply because it's a Z07 performance package as well. But what a great tie-in to the Carbon 65 package. Just look at this car. I mean, again, I am so bummed that every time I try to show you guys a Carbon 65 car, I don't have the proper lighting. Some sun's coming. Because there's a really nice sheen to the ceramic matrix gray and it's hard to, it's hard to show on camera. All right, all right, I'm with you. Let's, it's a convertible, the top has to be down. Let's put it down, we're standing outside the car here. I'll just hold this button down. In case you guys didn't know, just a little FYI, 
no latches to undo the convertible top. Just push that button that I'm, I'm actually holding right now inside on the dash. You can do that moving up to 30 miles an hour. How about that? Not used to having that ability. Wait for that beep. Oh my gosh, wait for that beep. In fact, when we got this car from the other dealership, the battery was dead. So I get the jump pack on it and trying to get it moved off the truck so we can get it into the dealership and kind of do another PDI and just check everything out. Of course, we still had to add uh, the ground effects because they weren't on there, but thank goodness they were shipped to us. Uh, so when I got the jump pack on and I hit the power up button, it went for like two and a half seconds and then it beeped. So whomever was in that car before never completed the cycle on the power top, then the power top was dead. So if you've got a Corvette convertible, whether it's a 14 Stingray, it's a Grand Sport, it's a Z06, ZR1 even too, yeah, I can't forget that. Even a ZR1, when you're putting the top up or down, wait until you hear that beep, then let go of that button. Once you get, you know, adequated with the car and you're kind of going about your day, when it's new, when it's brand new, you're kind of paying attention to everything that you're doing on the car, but you know, you've been in for a little bit, in for a few months, had the car for a year, you forget all that kind of stuff. You just don't pay attention. You're in a hurry. You got to go here. You got to go there. Wait for the beep so you don't have a dead. Because if you don't wait for the beep the next morning, that car's going to be dead because that top internally is still cycling. All right. Just a, another tip from your buddy, Rick. All right. Now with that top down, look at this thing. This is gorgeous. Look how sweet this is. Oh, I forgot to mention too, the exposed carbon fiber on the tonneau covers back there. Yeah, more carbon. Yeah, baby, bring it on. guys too not only are we showcasing the car because I'm just excited it's here for inventory uh, she's for sale too so <laughs> if you're interested my contact information is up on the screen it's down below in the description Now before we go, just another quick reminder, kind of a bummer too, I'm hoping it's not the case. Uh, this weekend is the annual, it's the 20th annual, Roscoe Village Corvette Show in Coshocton, Ohio, sponsored by our friends at Classic Glass. Uh, this particular car, I was actually gonna bring to the show so you guys could see it. I mean, seeing it's so hard to video and photograph the ceramic gray. When you see it in person, people just, they just go, wow. Is that beautiful? Wow, is that classy? Yeah, it is. Well, there's a threat of rain, and I'm certainly, I'm not gonna become uh, Mark Royce Jr. by driving a Z07 car in the rain to the show, but uh, we'll be there regardless. Some free posters and what have you. Folks, we've got a lot of fun stuff coming up for you on the channel. Thanks again for taking time out of your day to join me. I enjoy making these videos. I enjoy communicating with you. It really is a thrill to me, and it's an honor to have an opportunity to do business with you guys. So remember, if you're going to stop dreaming and you're going to start driving, well, I want to be your guy. I want to earn your business, and I want to be a part of your Corvette family. We'll see you soon. Touchdown for the first time right here, Pit Big. Bam! <laughs> I like that.